Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different to any videos I've done before, as I've recently had a really cool experience visiting one of Patrick Moratoglu's new tennis centers based in Costa Navarino, Greece. I was kindly invited on this trip on behalf of functional tennis on a media trip, which is something I've not done before, but it was an awesome opportunity I couldn't turn down. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through what I got up to on this trip and share with you some of the footage that I got showing you through what the hotel was like, what the tennis courts and facilities were like, what my experience of the coaches was, and also some of the other things that I got up to. So whether you're a tennis player looking to go on holiday soon or fancy just checking out what I got up to, stay tuned to the end of the video. Let's check it out. I've split the video into separate chunks so that you can skip through the video using the timestamps below. I'll be talking about the tennis courts and facilities, the coaching team, the hotel, and other activities you can get up to at Costa Navarino. So we're in October at the moment and the weather in the UK was pretty good at the time. However, I go to check the forecast in Greece and for the four days that I had planned out there, thunder and lightning storms were predicted all the way through. However, when we actually got out there, it seemed as though Costa Navarino had its own microclimate. And although there were thunderstorms, they only lasted a short period of time. And then we had bright sunshine and were able to play lots of tennis. So before we talk about anything else, let's talk about the tennis facilities. Now, as soon as we arrived at the hotel, there was a Moratoglu van parked outside the front. This would take us from the hotel to the tennis courts each time we were playing. It was only a couple of minutes drive, but it really made the experience even better. As you pull up to the tennis center, you have a striking view of some beautiful clay courts. In total, there are 12 consisting of seven real clay courts, four acrylic hard courts, and one grass court. In fact, this grass court is the only grass court in the whole of Greece, and the lawns are manicured perfectly. We were lucky enough in between the breaks of weather to be able to play on all of them. Next to the tennis courts, there's a small area where you can get a tea or a coffee or grab a bottle of water. And there's also a shop where you can purchase any tennis clothes that you might need. You can see from the videos that I got when I was out there, how nice these courts looked and they were even better to play on. It's been a long time since I've played on an acrylic hard court and I absolutely loved it. I'm used to playing on artificial clay like this. So playing on real clay was a real treat as well. We don't have many in the UK due to the wet weather we have. From speaking to the coaches, they had Maria Sakari training on the grass court before Wimbledon. And due to the quality of their courts, regularly have professional tennis players training at the center when they've got an event in Greece. So next up, I'm gonna talk about the coaches and what activities you can do on the courts in Costa Navarino. So on our very first day when we got to the tennis center, we were greeted by two very friendly coaches, Konstas and Yanis. These guys were two brothers previously living in Athens. And they'd moved over to Costa Navarino to coach at the Moratoglu Tennis Center. Just to give you a bit of an idea of how good they are, one of the brothers grew up playing tennis with Stefanos Tsitsipas. And out of the eight times they've played each other, he's beaten Stefanos all eight times. So you could say he's a pretty good tennis player. He and his brother got us on court straight away, got us running around and instantly built a good rapport with every single one of us. We were a mixed bunch of different abilities. Some of the people on our trip were great tennis players, others were less experienced, but both of the coaches adapted perfectly to our needs. On day one, we did quite an intense clinic, working on footwork patterns, ground strokes, serves, and played some match play afterwards. And going in as a coach, I always love seeing how other coaches work, seeing their coaching styles and how they build their relationships with their players, but also what drills they do. And I must say, I was really, really impressed with how they work. From speaking to the coaches, they were talking about the different guests that they get at the hotel and how they cater for them. In the past few months of working, they've already seen quite a few top junior players that play internationally, traveling to the center to train under their tuition. There's lots of flexibility to build tailored programs around your needs. So if you want to go on a tennis holiday yourself, or if you've got a junior player that would like to go out there and have a training camp, you can get in touch with the coaches and they'll build something to suit your needs. Whether that's training around a specific strength or weakness, or whether you want to improve your fitness or your match play skills, there's something for everybody. As well as meeting these two awesome resident coaches, we also had the pleasure of meeting Pierre and Thomas from Patrick Moratoglu's Academy in Nice, France. These guys are training some of the top players in the world. Thomas is working with the current US Open junior champion and Pierre is working with two of the world's best juniors at 12 years and under. It was really interesting hearing their stories about life at the academy and what it's like working with some of these top players, seeing people like Serena and Stefanos training at the academy. I may make another video on these stories alone. If you'd find that interesting, let me know in the comments below. What was really interesting speaking to all four of the coaches 
is their consistent approach to coaching. They've all been trained by Patrick Moratoglu and the Moratoglu method. And from the conversations I had with them, overall, it's about smashing the basics. If you look at any professional tennis player, they all play with very different techniques, but what they all have in common is they do the basics very well. The Moratoglu coaches tend to focus more around a player's strengths to start off with, building those up and then working on developing the weaknesses afterwards, which in my opinion is a really great approach. What they're also really hot on with every player that they work with whether they're beginners or pro tennis players is making sure that you prepare early for every single shot. Common phrase that I heard the coaches saying throughout the days I was there is open early. Trying to get that racket prepared nice and early and the feet in the right position before the ball lands on your side of the court. If you can do that it will allow for good body weight transfer and many more options when you're hitting your shots. The Moratoglu method seems to be quite versatile in the way that every single player is different so coaches are very good at adapting to players needs. What was also really interesting was we got to play in Patrick Moratoglu's famous UTS format, which if you haven't heard of it before, is a short format where you play rounds of eight minutes, scoring one, two, three, rather than 15, 30, 40. You have one serve per point and you get to use different cards. Using a card may make your point worth more or could force you or your opponent to use a different strategy, such as the serve and volley card means that your opponent must serve and volley on the next two points. It's a really fun and engaging way to train competitively. It was really great hitting balls with these coaches you can see straight away the caliber of their games and it also shows in their coaching too. So next up I'm going to talk through some of the other activities you can do at Costa Navarino outside of tennis. Now due to the thunderstorms that we had on one of the mornings we were unable to play tennis at the courts so as the Moratoglu coaches do, they adapted really well and took us into the basketball courts. Now, this is probably one of the most intense sessions I've done probably in the last 10 years. They took us through a 45 minute pro warm up, which they do with their top players, taking us through some mobility exercises and some pulse raises before taking us through a tennis specific hit workout, as I would describe it. Every exercise, although it was a cardio exercise, was based around developing good tennis techniques. Again, they were constantly talking about having an early preparation, getting body weight transfer going through the ball, showing the consistent messages within the Moratoglu method. As we were walking through to the basketball courts, you could also see some of the other activities that you can do within the hotels. There's a climbing wall, there's an American style diner, a bowling alley, I even saw an outdoor go-karting track. So some really cool activities for yourselves and to keep the kids busy. There's also an incredible looking golf course. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time on this trip to go and play, but it looks stunning. So if you're into golf, great place to go. Finally, one of the activities that we did manage to go on was a traditional Greek cookery class. Now, this was incredible. It was hosted at a lovely traditional Greek home with two really kind ladies who showed us how to cook Greek style. We made aubergine pie, we made tzatziki, we made pasta, um, and we got to eat it all afterwards. So really, really lovely evening. Um, and to top it off, they actually taught us Greek dancing. Now, luckily there's no footage of me dancing. Um, I actually ended up on a table and drinking mid press up, which is kind of strange, but um, you might be able to see the footage of this elsewhere, but I'm definitely not putting it in this one. The house was in a stunning location, looking over the Costa Navarino Bay, and it was a fantastic experience. So if you are going, it's definitely something I recommend. If you speak to the hotel staff, there are lots of different activities like this that you can do. So finally, let's just talk about the hotel. Now, because we were so busy doing all of the other activities, I didn't spend quite so much time in the hotel. But if I was there for longer, I definitely would have done, especially sitting by the pool. In Costa Navarino, there are two main hotels, the Westin and the Romanos. We were staying in the Romanos and it is stunning. The rooms were amazing. I had a twin room with a little balcony, but I could see below the rooms had a swim up pool. Incredible. The food was amazing. Breakfast was served, buffet style, loads of different options. And within the two hotels, there are about eight or nine different luxury restaurants that you can go to. We visited Flame on the first night, which was lovely. We had great steak, a really nice mixture of food. On one of the nights we went to Daluigi, which was an Italian themed restaurant. And in one of the lunch times, we went down to the beach to the Barbuni restaurant. All three of these, we opted for a family sharing platter so we could test all the different meals out. And it was incredible, really good food. What was really handy because it was raining, a bit like it is now, was the hotels have a buggy service. So if you need to get from A to B, you can go to the foyer, 
ask if they can take you there. It might be you want to go to the golf course or for the tennis club. Then you can hop on a buggy and they'll take you there within minutes. We went down to the beach a couple of times, one to have lunch at Barbuni and the other for just a stroll. And with the stormy weather, it was quite choppy, but it was still beautiful. I can imagine on a nice sunny day, the beach would be beautifully calm and lovely to go for a swim. So there you go. There was a quick summary of my trip. There's loads more I could talk about, but overall I had a fantastic time. I only wish it was a bit longer. If it was and the weather was better, I would have spent way more time at the hotel, by the pools and down at the beach. The nice thing is after meeting the coaches, I've stayed in touch with all four of them and I'm definitely planning a trip back out there again. I'm even thinking about taking a group from the avenue down to Costa Navarino as I think they'll love it just as much as I did. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my experience at Costa Navarino. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to see more. I hope to see you next time. Take care.